Hi, so my name is Steven Varimus. I'm a software engineer in, uh, in Huawei in, uh, in Cambridge in the UK. Uh, it's, it is my first time in uh, LLVM, so I'm really happy to be here and to have uh, maybe uh, new, I don't know, new, new ideas coming from discussions that we can have here. Um, so I'm going to jump start to, to my uh, presentation. So this work that I'm going to present uh, comes from a, an observation that is that writing libraries is a time-consuming task with many hours spent fine-tuning code to achieve the best performance. Uh, it has, and uh, that code has to be adapted every time there's the new hardware that comes in, and that also takes time. And this uh, optimization, which this fine-tuning is often done in assembly code, which is also quite error-prone sometimes. So uh, we would like to improve this. So the question we ask ourselves, and a lot of people have in the past as well, is can we give compilers the task of doing this optimization to, genera to generate uh, optimized libraries that can compete with handwritten uh, libraries. So this is what we are intending to do in this work uh, by generating an optimized math library using compilers. Uh, and we aim to support the BLAST API. And we aim to do this uh, while reducing time taken to optimize and fine-tuning the, the, these math functions and to optimize the creation of hardware-specific code, and doing this by leveraging the functionalities of MLIR. So the initial objective of this uh, work was to explore basically what performance we can get uh, from this approach, and our expectation slash hope was to get to something like 90% of the performance of a reference library that is a, an in-house hand-tuned BLAST library that we have in Huawei, which is called Compung uh, BLAST, or KPL for short. So it's an implementation of BLAST, which is itself a specification that defines a set of linear algebra functions, uh, such as, I don't know, dot product, or vector multiplication, matrix multiplication. And uh, we are going to compare ourselves with the single-threaded version of this, uh, this library. So this work is going to be about single-thread. And the hardware that we use for measurement is also an in-house uh, hardware you know, called the Compeng 920. Uh, it's an ARM 64-bit machine. Uh, and we're going to mostly focus on uh, the gem operation of PLAS, so general matrix, matrix multiplication. And the reason for that is that's a quite performance-critical uh, operation for many applications. And it can be a bottleneck in many applications, so it's good if it's fast. Um, just to give you an idea, KPL is able to reach uh, more than 90% of the theoretical peak of this hardware, both in single precision gem and double precision gem. And it competes quite well with other libraries, such as OpenBlast, that you can see here in blue. So since we focus on GEM, we rely on two core transformations. The first one is styling. Uh, there's been some, uh, there's been some uh, description of this this morning uh, in a talk about uh, what's true in MLIR, uh, about tiling and packing, but I'm going to give you a bit of a reminder. So the idea of tiling is to apply the operation on a subset of the matrices that we call tiles. And uh, packing consists in remapping the data in these styles so that we can get sequential memory accesses. And for now, there's nothing new. This is something that already existed. And it follows the work of uh, Goto and Van der Gein to, that define how to compile an efficient gem. And actually, their use in MLIR already been described as well in, in recent papers, such as one by uh, Bon Dugula. Sorry for the pronunciation. Uh, so what we want to generate, basically, is this. It's a nest of, of loops that are parameterized by sizes, by tile sizes. And at the innermost uh, level, we have what it's called uh, the macro kernel that is applying the actual operation on tiles. 
So, and what we built in, in Huawei is a full compilation pipeline that is able to generate, optimize, and compile a BLAST function. The way it works is that we start with a high-level definition of the function that is generated directly in the linear dialect. So for now, it does not come from a front end. I'm going to talk about this a little bit later. But uh, it's not too much of an issue for us because we know exactly the set of functions we want to compile so we can directly generate a high-level definition inside MLIR, so in Linux. And this um, high-level definition is given to an optimizing compiler that we call MLIRC with a list of transformations to apply, such as styling, and their arguments, such as style sizes. And the optimized functions then uh, can be packaged into a library that can be used to, for applications. Um, one thing to note is that transformations may depend on specific inputs of the function. So one set of transformation or parameter is not always good for every possible input. And a good example is that in the case of GEM, uh, packing is not always good for small matrices. It may be worth it to not pack in the case of small matrices. But the thing is you don't know at compile time what kind of matrices you're going to apply your function on. So we use what we call the multi-kernel multi approach, where the idea is that for each BLAST function, we generate a set of kernel that can be seen as uh, optimized variants of the function that have been tuned for a specific input or for a specific range of input. And at runtime, we have a mechanism that is able to select the best kernel to run depending on this, these dynamic information. And a good example for that is the AXP operation, when, where we have two kernels, so one that is pretty good for small inputs, for small vector inputs, but not so good for bigger vector inputs in blue, and the other one that is not that good for small vector inputs, but it, that is pretty good for big vector inputs. And by using the multi-kernel approach, we're able to switch on the fly between each, between both, and then uh, get best of both worlds, basically, uh, by, uh, by using this approach. So on top of this, we have implemented several optimizations at, at, uh, at different uh, levels of the pipeline in order to improve performance. Uh, some at the high-level definition, so at the linal level, where, for example, in GEM, if you have uh, the N dimension that is smaller than the M dimension, then it's worth it to move your multiplication by alpha to the second matrix, to the B matrix, because now you do only uh, K times M of operation instead of M times K operation. And that is quite basic, but it can improve performance by quite a lot. So for example, here before, we were about at 60% of KPL uh, in, uh, when we were multiplying alpha by A, and when we do it by B, we jump up to almost 90%. So that's quite good. Another optimization we have is uh, a support for the extension of uh, uh, some extensions of BLAST uh, through new transformations. So for example, we have uh, support for mixed precision gem where element types of the input matrices can differ. And this is really easily enabled at the linal level by just injecting um, casting operations there, depending on which uh, types you get. And you know, in order to improve performance, we apply a new transformation that is hoisting the, these casting operations outside of the microkernel and into the packing loops of the function, and this reduces register pressure in the microkernel and also gives us quite an improvement in uh, performance. We have also different optimizations uh, at lower level of the MLIR code. So for example, hoisting of vector reductions outside of loops. So the idea is that if you have, if you are doing um, operations on vectors inside the, a loop and at the end of the loop, you just reduce your result, your vector result, in order to, to add it to an accumulator, what you could do instead 
is keep vectors for the entire lifetime of the loop, and only then afterwards reduce uh, and add to your initial accumulator. And this reduces, obviously, the number of additions. It's pretty good. Um, and uh, it's also able to be applied on uh, if, if the accumulator itself is a vector by using a vector dot multi reduction instead and reducing on the correct uh, dimension. So this has quite a significant impact on some uh, operations such as uh, GMV, so operations that um, usually lower to dot product. So as you can see here, in the case of general matrix vector multiplication, we go from about 30% to 19% or more than our baseline by applying this transformation. So that's all pretty good. Uh, now I'm going to talk about complex types. So the idea is that since we want to cover the whole BLAST API eventually, we need to be able to provide operations on complex inputs such as complex gem. So again, at the high level, pretty straightforward. We just replace the element type by a complex type. But to compile it into something that is efficient uh, posed some problem for us at, uh, with what's upstream. Uh, because uh, complex tensors, as far as I know, are not vectorized at the moment. And uh, the standard transformations that lower the complex dialect uh, are basically splitting into the complexes. So they are separating the imaginary part and the real part, uh, which is a bit of a bummer for us because we are targeting hardware that is able to deal with uh, with complex vector uh, through some specific complex instructions such as FCMLA, so complex multiply and accumulate for, for vectors. So we would like to make to use of them. And if we don't, we actually get only about 1% of our baseline, so that's obviously not enough. So we tried to, to fix that. To, we considered several options to improve this. The first one was to transform a complex operation, a complex gem, into a series of real gem, following some work on the literature, uh, but didn't give us too good performance, and it still didn't let us use that, these instructions that we are seeking to use, these uh, complex specific instructions. And on top of that, it's not obviously extensible to other operations. For example, maybe, I don't know, but a C gem V might not lower into a series of real gem V the same way a gem can do, can do it. So instead, our solution slash suggestion, which is still a work in progress with quite a few caveats, uh, is to support vectorization of uh, complexity, so to have vectors of complex, and at some point of the pipeline, to do a type conversion, to, to transform a vector of tam, m times n times complex into a vector of m times n times 2 times the element type of the complex. And in order to remember that we're still doing complex operations, we extended some operations such as contraction and other product with a new attribute kind, uh, complex add. And in order again to lower into FCMLA, uh, we have extended the backend uh, by creating a new FCMLA add uh, intrinsic and the code to lower to it. This uh, last point has been uh, recently uh, submitted uh, upstream. It's still uh, in discussion. Uh, so the idea of the conversion is this, is, is if you have, a, for example, a transpose operation, then after conversion, you're going to have still a transpose operation, but with a 3D input, so you're going to have to add some uh, arguments to your operation. The same happens to uh, transfer read and transfer write, you have to extend it with some new value for offsets. Uh, the only operation that is a bit different is the contraction. So it is done with the last two dimensions flattened. So instead of having m times n times 2 times t, you have a vector of m times 2n, the value 2m, the computed value 2n times t. And we do that so that we don't split, again, between imaginary part and real part. And uh, so that's adapted to the ARM um, uh, V8 FCMLA where 
the vectors are expected to contain interleaved real and imaginary parts. Uh, so in order to have this, we have to surround these contract operations with shape cast instructions that cast from 3D to 2D and vice versa when we exit the, the contraction. And we clean that up with a few optimizations. So the first one hoists out these vector shape cast operation outside of loops. So if you have a loop that starts with a shape cast and then with the opposite shape cast, you can basically move them outside of the loop and operate on the casted uh, vector. So that helps us moving the shape cast outside of the macro kernel loop. And the next optimization consists in transforming pairs of vector.transfer read followed by vector.shape cast into instead tensor.collapse shape followed by vector.transfer read. The idea here is instead of reading in 3D and then recasting the vector that we can cost some data copy, we are reading differently from memory already and then we don't have to reshape. And this gives us a significant performance improvement, plus 50%, or yeah, on average, plus 50%, uh, since yeah, we don't uh, involve data copies. So there's some limitations. Uh, uh, the main ones, I guess, it's a bit of a lack of genericity, uh, because we assume a lot of things about what we want to target. So we assume that the complex type that we get corresponds to that two times t representation, where values are basically side by side. And uh, it is heavily targeted towards hardware that can deal with these vectors where things are interleaved. And something that also is a bit of an issue is interface changes, because a function that used to take a vector of, for example, eight times complex, now takes a vector of eight times two uh, real values. So that changes the interface. It's not too much of an issue for us because we are using wrappers. Since we're building a library, we're just having wrappers around the core of the function that can deal with this transformation. But in the general case, uh, if functions are calling each other, that may pose a problem. So we are working on extending the complex dialect with a casting operation that would do this actual uh, conversion from complex to two times the value in the complex and vice versa. In our case, it would lower to a no up, but in other targets, it could lower to actual data copies or, or to actual operations. So now for some uh, results. So if we go back to the real gem, uh, we have run um, uh, S-gem and D-gem, so single precision gem and double precision gem, a thousand times, well, a thousand random points where, and, and plot them on a graph that represent uh, where the three dimensions represent the three uh, dimensions of the matrices, M and NK. And what we can see is that we get quite good performance because uh, both of them are better than, so, we are better than 90% of KPL 94% of the time on SGEM about, and on DGEM 95% of the time. And we're even better than KPL in a couple of 20 points or something in, a, in SGEM. So that's pretty uh, promising for us. Thank you. And uh, for complex, it's even better actually, because uh, in that case, we Basically, 99% of our points are better than 90% of our baseline, which was our goal. And uh, especially in the double precision case, more than 80% of points are better than the reference. So that proves to be quite, uh, uh, quite again, quite, uh, quite promising. So I'm almost done. So to conclude on, on this work, so what we have is uh, we have leverage the functionality of MLIR to build a full pipeline that can generate, can generate optimized functions of a BLAST library using a multi-kernel approach that can dynamically adapt to specific inputs. And uh, we've applied some optimizations to achieve results that can compete with heavily tuned handwritten assembly. And as a uh, there's a lot of things in the stack, but as some ongoing and future work, what we would like to do is connect to a DSL, for example, ALP, which is a DSL for C++ uh, to do some uh, 
linear, linear algebra that would lower to MLIR and use our pipeline. And in this way, we would not just write a library anymore. We would be able to deal with more uh, dynamic input and deal with sequences of linear algebra operations. And by doing this also, we are interested in fusi fusing some of these operations to improve performance. Uh, and we have already some good results for GEM when we, I'm almost done, <laughs> sorry. Um, for, for, for GEM, for when we, when we fuse the alpha operation inside the matmol that follows, we get some good uh, improvement. And we also would like to look at the, a multi-thread version of the, of the library and also uh, to target some more diverse hardware. Yeah. And I'm done. Thank you, Stephen, so, for the nice talk. Thank you. Any question from the audience? Uh, hey, yeah, thanks for the talk. Just a quick one. Uh, when you were talking about having different, uh, you know, uh, dealing with different sized kernels because of the performance difference, did you consider just using JIT compilation for that to get maximum performance? Yes, we did. And especially in the case of uh, the last thing I talked about, the DSL and dealing with uh, new inputs that would be quite dynamic. We are interested in this. Uh, as of now, the performance are not too good because of the cost, actually, of the JIT. Uh, the fact that we compile and it's quite slow to compile the, the whole pipeline. But if we could have a, some sort of caching system, we could improve this. Fair enough. All right. Thanks. Thank you. Hi. Thank you for the talk. Um, so a follow-up on that. So right now, you're specializing for specific sizes. Uh, could you elaborate on the heuristics? How do you choose uh, the sizes to, to specialize for? Okay, so um, so in, in the case of sizes, we can basically have some automated way to split the the input space and then to try to tune for each sub-range of the input space. And in other cases that I didn't talk about, uh, it's not only about small or big matrices or just sizes, it could also be about the values of input of scalar inputs. For example, when we have multiplication of, when alpha is uh, one, for example, we don't do then the alpha operation. Or when beta is zero, then we don't do the multiplication on C. So. The way we choose is by using some form of automation to, to, to select uh, sub-ranges of the data space. Is it kind of profile-guided or? So. <laughs> as much as you can. Elaborate. Yeah, that's, the, that's my um, bit of an issue for me because uh, yeah, it's, it's a bit, uh, I'm not sure I can completely this claim all of this, uh, but very, yeah, all I can tell you is that there's some sort of automation behind this. Okay, thank you. Yeah, sorry. Okay, if no questions, then thank you very much, Stephen. We will begin our next talk in six minutes. Thank you.